what are you most pleased about today or from the week that we've just had? Well, it's a huge relief <laughs> that some people came. And uh, maybe because we're idealists, maybe because we're a little bit hippie, maybe because we're just trying to cheer ourselves up. Lots of flowers and plants, blinds covering the worst bits, the windows clean. Um, yeah, very inoffensive. In fact, quite pleasant. <laughs> and was it was it a success? The session. <laughs> the session. Yes. Yes. I've never been loved Larry, you might have seen it until very recently this shop was all whitewashed over and has, has been empty for a, a long time and it's, it's terribly sad but we're very glad to be able to get in here and do a little lick of paint and cover up some of the more kind of hideous parts of uh, where the walls are falling down um, and open it up for uh, our Green Rubes project. Whenever we're in here, you're very welcome to just um, knock on the window if we haven't got the door open because the traffic's so awful and come in and have a cup of tea and see what's going on and what's next. We'll try and publicise everything in the window saying what events are coming up because there'll be lots more that we haven't yet planned. We've got um, our Imagine Wall, which uh, Emily, local artist, has come in and worked on today, uh, which we're going to um, get people, hopefully, to any ideas they can imagine uh, about Snow Hill and the London Road area, they can write down on a piece of paper, stand in front of a camera, we'll take a snap and put that on the wall. So we start to create a collage of people's faces and their ideas. Because this is the way that Kilter works, is we go from the history all the way through to an imaginative projection of what an area might be like. And ultimately, the big finale is to have a show. So, uh, 1740, very, very little here indeed. It was all fields. Um, by 1800, it's all built up. The bespoke kitchen shop, where we are now, seven Walcott buildings, was Cobb's Bakery from the 1870s until quite recently. Chelsea House was built in the late 1950s and the ground floor where the Ripples um, shop is now was a co-op and there's somebody walking along the roof. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Priorities. Yeah. Next to it, Long Acre Hall, which we have a picture of as well. Oh, on the other side, yes. In 1978, after the motor company had moved out, the building was used by various community groups and a youth training project. There was live music, fo a photographic workshop, carpentry workshops, pottery workshops with Peter the Potter, uh, and there were other activities for children, uh, uh, unemployed people, and so on. Unfortunately, um, funding was pulled by the council in the late 1990s. The building has lain derelict ever since. We're going to be re returning to Longacre Hall at the end of the walk. But for now, we're going to head out into the traffic. <laughs> a drapers, a confectioner's, a dairy, a toy shop, a sweet shop, a cobbler's, an off-license, all operating quite successful little businesses here. But now all the shops are either empty or they're antique shops, they're not, they're not food shops, they're not, because, but why, you've got a supermarket down there, so everybody goes to the supermarket. Um, this a a alleyway through here, was the access to the Bath horse tram depot in the late 19th century. This is where the horse trams were kept. Porterbutt, sadly another lost inn, built in the late 18th century, extended 
This bit was added around 1816. Big brewery, stables at the back, big, sorry, big pub, stables at the back, so on and so forth, um, but closed in 2009. This was where the Pack Horse Inn was, right here. So that was the first building on the London Road, the Pack Horse Inn. Just stood somewhere about there. We don't know what it looked like, but it was there by 1740. Go! We're going this way. This seems a nice quiet place to talk about the demolition of Snow Hill. We've got a bit of the old Snow Hill here. And as I explained, the area was almost untouched by the Bath Blitz. But five years after the Second World War, the council applied to the government for a compulsory purchase order to redevelop the whole area. But the buildings on Snow Hill were not slums. They're similar to the ones we've, we've seen here and we've seen before. Now very desirable. Who declared them unfit? The council. <laughs> the council. And the bulldozers moved in shortly afterwards. History of Bath, eight, published in 1800, because you've got a copy of. Also, so that's in that. Um, thank you very much indeed. Oh, shit! Oh, uh, terrific. Yes. Eggs. Eggs, very droll. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oli, um, what time is it? Uh, it's about half past nine. Yeah. We've just finished our guided walk. Um, there was a bit of banter in our little group at the end of the walk. We were pelted with an egg from the resident of Snow Hill from their balcony, so we scuttled down to the light thrown from the windows of Domino's Pizza. Uh, where people were exchanging cards frantically to a community built up and people wanted to um, keep in with each other. Um, so what, what the plan for this evening is, is that um, we'll just be here for a little while and we'll just do a couple of little sort of warmer kind of exercises to get us sort of into contact with the fabric of language. What what comes out of this evening is very open-ended, it's very laid back, it's not you know, any great pressure for anyone to sort of come up with anything amazing. We're going to um, do a little walk around, probably partly the route that you've already done on the guided tour, but we're going to be looking with very different eyes this time. I was sort of noticing patterns um, quite a lot. I noticed there was a smashed glass pane and, and the, the way the gra glass had fractured, it was all sort of radia radiating out like a peacock's tail. Mm. Today she took her porridge and her tea on a tortoiseshell tray in her bedroom. It's a headache day today. I've laid out her morning dress, the dove grey one, but if she doesn't get up till lunchtime, I'll have to change it for the blue one with a lace collar. Um, it is green, it is white. It is regal. It's the only nobility they know. Um, trees, rolling hills and rooftops. Um, the bath of blood, the bath of uh, rising steam of hidden springs, of underground water, the bath of Sulis Minerva. The bath that nobody, nobody ever told them about. Their world is here. It's Brunswick Street number 13.